magnetic flux and guitar pickups. <laughs> One of the more interesting applications of a permanent magnet is in an electric guitar pickup. So how does it work exactly? Let's look at a cylindrical permanent magnet. It has a north pole at one end and a south pole at the other. Between them it creates a magnetic field. The magnetic field in the space around the magnet is approximately the shape shown in this diagram. The lines represent the contours of the magnetic flux density in a similar way to height contours on a map. Flux density, the concentration of the lines, is represented by the symbol B. In order to quantify the strength of a permanent magnet, we need to know the total flux. This is found by adding together all the flux density lines. Because flux lines always form closed loops, the place where all the lines collect together is within the magnet itself. Once we know the total flux within the magnet, we can establish an equivalent magnetic circuit. The magnetic field of a permanent magnet is generated by currents within the atomic structure of the magnetic material. That is quite complicated. However, it is sufficient to know that the magnetic field is the result of an electric current. According to Ampere's law, electric current causes a magnetomotive force, MMF. Magnetic flux is the result of the MMF driving the lines of force through magnetic resistance, or reluctance. In the same way as electrical resistance, the total magnetic resistance, or reluctance, can easily be calculated by Ohm's law applied to magnetic circuits. It is important to recognise that the total reluctance is made up of two components. One is caused by the magnetic material itself, and the other comes from the reluctance of the flux path outside the permanent magnet, which in this case is entirely made of air. The reluctance of the permanent magnet is designated RMPM, and the reluctance of the air is designated RM air. Calculating the actual values of these reluctances is rather complicated, but because they are connected in series, their values are simply added together to obtain the total reluctance of the magnetic circuit. By Ohm's law, we can see that the total flux is determined by the magnetomotive force applied across the sum of the two reluctances. If we now place ferromagnetic material, for example a guitar string made of steel, within the magnetic field, the flux pattern changes. This is because steel is a much better conductor for magnetic flux than air, so the magnetic flux lines prefer to run through a material with a better magnetic conductivity. From the perspective of the magnetic field, it appears as if the flux lines are sucked into the steel by the ferromagnetic substance. By doing so, the ferromagnetic material ensures an easy passage for the flux lines to the opposite pole of the magnet. This easy passage is caused by two effects. All flux lines that would otherwise have gone over the string now have a shorter path, and those that follow a path of the same length are now passing through a lower reluctance. Also, some of the flux lines that would otherwise run slightly below the string will bend upwards to follow this easier path. If we now return to the equivalent circuit, we can illustrate the new situation by short-circuiting a part of the RM air with a section of ferromagnetic string. This lowers the total reluctance of the flux path. If the string moves closer to the magnet, the air path shortens and the reluctance drops even further, thus causing an even stronger magnetic flux from the magnet. As the string vibrates, there will be changes in the total flux that are dependent on the overall distance between the magnet and the string. Even if the vibrations are from side to side, they will still cause changes in the distance and in the magnetic flux. A coil around the permanent magnet will generate voltage proportional to the changes in the flux. 
it may need many thousands of turns to generate sufficient voltage to give enough input for a guitar amplifier. The voltage induced into the coil obeys Faraday's law, which states that induced voltage depends on the rate of change of magnetic flux within the coil. The faster the change of magnetic flux, the higher the induced voltage. It might appear from this that the higher frequencies would be picked up louder than the lower frequencies. However, the amplitude of the string's movement decreases at higher frequencies, so the velocity remains the same. As the coil voltage is proportional to the rate of change of flux, which is proportional to string velocity, the output does not change with frequency. There are many design possibilities here, which can give a large variety of frequency responses in practice. Placing coils around every magnet is rather expensive, and there would be issues with adding up the voltages from the six individual coils. Moreover, the movement of the string away from the magnet, which occurs for example when string bending, could result in a volume decrease. The flux conduction capability of a ferromagnetic string means that it collects neighbouring flux lines and ensures that nearly all the flux lines close their loop outside the copper coil. The use of a single large coil allows the collection of the changing flux of all six strings at once. In this case it won't matter how far away from the magnet each string is moved because the magnetic field always starts from the north pole and closes its loop to the south pole within the coil. Finally, instead of utilising six cylindrical magnets, just one large rectangular magnet can be used with six simple ferromagnetic pole pieces. If those pole pieces are made of screws, their height and their distance from the strings can be adjusted. By doing this, the loudness of every single string is individually adjustable. That's it. That's the blues.